Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, I am going to solve a linear programming problem using Python pulp package. And the problem I am considering is from the manufacturing industry and in which we want to develop a weekly production plan. The problem is that we want to produce two different types of product and each product has two different models. One is Z345 product, another product is uh, W250 and they have two models, okay, each. One is standard, another one is industrial. So basically, we have four decision variables. That is basically the number of product we should produce of Z345 type of product uh, having the model standard. And similarly, X2 can be represent Z345 of the product having the standard of industrial category. Okay, so we have defined these four decision variables. One is with respect to Z345, one another is with respect to W250. The next information they have given that we want to maximize the profit. So they have given the profit. So we want to maximize it. So they have given the profit uh, unit, which is 400 against each standard Z345. Uh, Similarly, against each standard W250 is 500. So that's why we are right now 400 against X1 and 500 against X3 as these standards are represented with X1 and X3. Okay. But regarding industrial, they are saying that uh, of this profit, they are also getting the net of 40% premium. So which means we will calculate the 40% of the 400, which is 160. So we will add into the 400, that would be the coefficient of the X2. Similarly, 40% of 500 would be 200. So 200 plus 500 would be 700. So this is the complete objective function of our linear programming problem. So we want to maximize it. Next, we have given the constraints regarding the availability of these two resources. One is, uh, is a zinc, another is iron. So the maximum zinc is available, that is 250 pounds. Okay, uh, similarly, the maximum iron is available, that is 200, uh, 2800 pounds. Okay, so the first constraint that would be equal to 25x1 plus 46x2 plus 16 plus 34x4 is less than or equal to the availability of the zinc which is 2500 okay so that would be the first constraint similarly the next constraint would be with respect to the availability of the iron that is this one okay next they are saying that uh, at least 20 standard or uh, z345 uh, support we should produce okay so that is basically the x1 plus x2 must be greater than or equal to 20 that is basically with respect to Z345. So the next restriction they are saying that that at least 50% of the total production must be industrial models. So what are the industrial models? That is X2 we have represented. Similarly, we have represented with X4. Okay, so X2 plus X4 must be greater than or equal to the 50% of the total production. So total production can be represented with all that decision variable which is X1 plus X2 plus X3 plus X4. Further, they have given the restriction on that, that neither Z345 models nor W models can be count more than 75% of the weekly production. Okay, so how we can incorporate this particular constraint that is with respect to this 75% of this one maximum, similarly 75% of this one. Okay, so that is X1 plus x2 okay so they cannot be more than 75 percent of the total production similarly this one also cannot be more than the 75 percent okay so this is in the end we have a non-negativity constraint so this is the linear model which we want to solve using python pulp so in order to solve with the python pulp we need to call the pulp library as well as in order to display the result properly i will use the pandas library so that's why i'm calling the both the libraries okay pulp as well as python uh, pandas the next thing is we need to define the the cn variables so that is like one is representing z345 standard x2 is representing z345 industrial so we have used the list from the python and store in a variable called product underscore model so these are the four variables which we have stored 
Okay, next, in order to declare the data corresponding to the uh, constraints against each variable, so we have used the dictionary. So these, uh, all these dictionaries are representing the constraints data, the left hand side of the constraints. So this is basically the first constraint data we have declared. This is basically the key value that is representing, we have already defined over here, column sign, then we are indicating the value that is basically uh, how much quantity of this particular model of product is using from the zinc. So that is 25 pound are required to produce this type of product out of 2500. Similarly, we have indicating the industrial perspective. Uh, we have indicated the third constraint, fourth, fifth, and the sixth constraints data. And the last one is indicating basically the objective function value. Okay. So we use the dictionary in order to define the data set. So once we have declared the indices, or you can say the decision variable right now in this case, uh, similarly, we have used the dictionaries to declare the data. Now we can define the problem. Okay, so the problem is that we want to maximize our objective function. So for that, we can call the function called LP problem. Okay, that is basically the function from the pearl. So we are giving the name of the problem. So whatever you want to write down, so you can write down over here. So write down because I am solving a manufacturing problem. So that's why I'm writing down manufacturing problem. Call and sign, we want to maximize it. So if the objective function was minimized, we can write down LP minimize. And then I'm storing this uh, whole function into a variable that is called menus underscore pp. Okay, next we are defining the decision variable. So how we can do that? So there is a call function lp variable dot text, okay, dictionary in which we are saving the, storing the variable or you can say declaring the variable. So here, whatever you want to write on over here because it will display while, while we will get the answer of the decision variables. And this is, we have already defined that is indicating the values of the decision variable, which is product models, okay. And this zero is indicating the lower bound of these decision variables. Okay, so that is uh, the, or you can say the non-negativity constraint. And by default, pulp will consider all the variable as a continuous, mean as a uh, fractional value can be occur of these all variables. But if you want the integer solution, then you need to write down comma LP in teacher. Okay, so but right now, because we are solving the linear programming, so that's why there is no need to write down Okay, once we have declared, set the problem, declare the decision variable, now we are going to define the objective function. And remember that whatever the variable name you are using, you must use uh, after that the same thing for uh, defining the objective function as well as for defining the constraint. So this plus equal mean add this particular thing to this same variable, okay, in which we have uh, set the problem. So we want to maximize it. What? We want to maximize that is basically the objective function. So for that we are saying LP sum. So we need to sum, okay? Because our objective function is we are summing it, and we want to multiply the 40, uh, 400 multiply by the x1. So 400 is stored in basically the profit, okay? So that is over here, okay? Multiply by the product models, and product models are the decision variable that is over here. Okay, where i is an index and we are saying i in product model. So that means against every uh, decision variable we have. Okay, so that is the indices. So this is the objective function. Similarly, we can use this same LP sum uh, function to define the constraints. So this is the first constraint how we can define the first constraint that is product models, which is the decision variable multiply by against each decision variable how much quantity we are using to produce a single product okay that is basically we have defined over here right and then we are saying for i in this one less than or equal to 2500 which is a zinc constraint similarly we have defined the iron constraint we have defined the minimum 345 constraint so this is basically we are labeling the constraints okay then we are indicating our third constraint, fourth and fifth. So all the constraints we have defined that is given over here. Okay, so using LP sum function. So once we have defined the objective function, 
okay uh, if i run again similarly the constraints now we can solve it we can write down mp underscore pearl uh, pp dot solve okay so this is a function once we write uh, write down this one and run it so we are getting one so this one is indicating optimum solution okay similarly if we write down print solution status that is lp status this one so right now if you want to write down is the solution is optimum so this statement will be written as it is and then right now it is indicating that this solution is an optimum solution okay next thing is we want to get the answer of the solution so this one is written as it is okay that is basically right printed okay mean this is new line so that why it will enter it write down the status and after the status write down the solution name and then again press enter okay so that's where they are saying uh, status so let me write over here is equal to status is equal to optimum okay so the status is equal to optimum and then we are saying in order to get the answer of the variables how we can do that for v in okay that is the name of the variable in which we have stored the uh, all the variables as well as the problem dot okay so once you do that okay once you do that or you can get this one that is um, name of the variable dot and then from the keypad you can click the write down on or you can press enter tab so once you enter the tab you will get the multiple options so here we want to get the answer of the variables so okay so we can over here okay so this is the variable in which we want and right now i have already done this so dot variables so we want to get the name of the variable as well as the value so we are writing down print okay tab then v dot name okay that is v dot name of the variable okay then comma equal v dot var value okay again that is the value of the design variable so what was the name that was we have given already okay so these are the name we have given okay so that would be considered as it is so this is product and then underscore it will give us the this one okay so that's why it is written down product underscore then you know, the index which we have given so these are the values these are the name and in the end in order to get the answer of the objective function we are saying print this one comma value function okay so this will give us um, uh, this is the again name of the variable dot objective so it will give us the answer of the objective function so i hope you clear how we can solve this linear programming problem using python one now the question is you know what uh, these fraction values are indicating so you can say that right now because this is a production plan so according to this production plan these fraction values are indicating the work in process inventory like this this inventory is available in our uh, uh, production floor okay so this is how much quantity we are producing of this particular product this is how much quantity we are producing this particular product similarly we are not producing anything against this particular product and so on okay the next thing is uh, as i told you earlier that uh, for using the pandas we can display um, uh, display the different results properly but right now if you write down uh, the name of the variable from the pulp package in which we have stored the entire problem then again if i write down dot tab press okay we will get the constraints over here okay so right now i am writing on constraints dot keys so what this function will do so whatever the name we have given to the each constraints it will display the name of the constraints uh, name okay so that is this one right now if you want to access or you can say you want to see a particular constraint or you can do that key name of the variable in which we have stored the variable constraints dot get function and then name of the key of that particular constraint so i have written now first constraints key and it will or you can say the name of the constraint so it will display me the first constraint that i have written over here okay so that is this one similarly if you want to get the values that was we will get the dot values so it will not showing us any name of the constraint only the all the set of constraints 
But if we write down dot item, so it will give us the name of the constraint as well as the entire constraint. Okay, so all the this one. So this is how we can access the different items of the constraint. So now I will use this particular function uh, and as well as from pandas, uh, I, I will use the data frame to display my sensitivity analysis results. So for that, I am saying uh, this is the name of the variable in which I am storing the sensitivity analysis results. I am saying uh, the column name is a constraint name, column sign, C name, that is basically the you can see the value which I will access it. Then similarly, slack values, that is a second column name. Okay, then I am uh, writing down, I will write down the value of the slack variable. So how we can do that, that is with respect to dot slack. Similarly, shadow price, or how can I write down the shadow price? That is dot pi. So as you know that the shadow price will come against every particular constraint. So I'm writing down for C name, that is the name of the constraint. Okay, comma C info that is basically in this particular uh, you can say index we have stored the slack as well as shadow price of every constraints in that is basically items. So this is basically from the items. So against every particular constraint, show me the slack value as well as the shadow price value again as well as the name of the constraint. So that was written over here. Okay, so this is basically the slack value of the first constraint, shadow price of the next constraint. So I hope you know how we can interpret the shadow price. Like if we are further buying one unit of zinc uh, pounds, we will get more, we can, uh, you can say, get more profit of uh, $21.10 per unit of the zinc, or you can say per pound of a zinc. Okay, next they are saying that in a part B that uh, we should relax this particular constraint. So all the things are the same. Okay, all the things are the same. So remember the last uh, two constraints with, that is with respect to 75% of the restriction. So in B part they are saying if we relax this one, what would be the effect on the answer? So we can, if we relax this one, so simply we have haven't written those uh, constraints so we solve it so we can see that that the profit will be increased okay and lastly they are saying that uh, if we uh, buy the 100 pounds worth of zinc okay mean 100 pound if we buy more zinc is it worthwhile because uh, they are saying that in the part c if we buy a 100 pounds for 1500 Okay, and we have seen that the shadow price of the zinc was 21 point this one. So 21.100 multiply by 100, we will get this one, which is greater than 1500. So this much cost we have to bear in order to buy more 100 pounds, but the profit we will get, that is this one. So this is beneficial for the company so that we can recommend that, yes, we can buy this 100 pounds more. But in the B part, they are saying that if we are buying those 100 pounds uh, at a price of 2600, then that wouldn't be beneficial for us because the shadow price is against 100 pounds. We have, we will get the benefit of uh, $2,101.10, whereas we have to bear the cost is 26. So cost is more than the profit. So that's why it would be not beneficial for the company. So I hope you have clear how to solve the linear programming problem using Python 12 package. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.